Today's lesson is on relations versus functions and the basic concepts that those entail. Ordered pairs can be used to show inputs and outputs. This is a fancy way of saying showing x's and y's. So if you look at the following set here, we have the ordered pair 1, 0, negative 2, comma, 3, 2, 4, and 0, 0. The inputs are going to be things like your 1, your negative 2, your 2, and your 0 here. We call these independent variables. They're the things that we can change. And then your y's are your outputs. Like your 4, 0, 3, and 0. These are the things that depend on what your x's were. So we did a lot of things in our last unit based off of y equals mx plus b. Where we would plug in an x, figure out the, the y, and go from there. So these are our outputs. This is a big concept that you're going to see a lot in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. So we're laying the groundwork for that right now. A relation pairs inputs with outputs. And there's many different ways to represent this information. And the top three that we're going to be talking about today are ordered pairs, just like we saw in our example up top. A mapping diagram, which is just a fancy way of separating your all your x's into this blue section here, and all your y's into your red section, and also by graphing. So this whole section is relations versus functions. A relation that pairs each input or each x with exactly one y or output is called a function. So what does this really mean? Well, you can look at it in an ordered pair sense or as a graph. So we're going to talk about both here. So first, to be a function, that simply means... Your x values, or what we now learned as being inputs, so inputs, cannot repeat. So if you're looking at our two examples here, A and B, do you notice how all the arrows, like this 1 to 3 here, that would be the ordered pair 1, 3, 2, 6, 3, 9, and 4, 12. If you look at either, none of your x's on the side here repeat, meaning that it is a function. But in part b, you'll notice that this 2 here, this input, see how it branches off to two values? That means that that 2 when we put them out as ordered pairs, which we're jumping ahead a little bit, but that's okay. 2 goes to the 1. And 2 also goes to the negative 2. Meaning our y value, I'm sorry, our x value repeated. And we can't let that happen. It's a relation, but it's not a function. So it's really easy to see if you have ordered pairs or a mapping diagram like an A and B here to see if your X repeats. So that's two birds, one stone, not too bad. Now to see something as a function given a graph, we have to pass something called the vertical line test. So the, the name kind of gives it away for you, a vertical line. 
So that's a line that goes up and down. So if I draw the following function, this is an absolute value function. If you remember, we talked about these briefly before, like there's families of functions. We talked about linear lines, and that was like our y equals mx plus b from before, and how different equations make different shapes. This is just one type of shape. Now, if I want to do the vertical line test, which I'm going to do in blue here, that just says I'm taking a vertical line and I'm drawing it anywhere on our graph here. Now, does it touch that red line more than once? No. If that happens, you pass the vertical line test. If you had another line where... I do this in purple here, like, um, let's say a sideways parabola. That vertical line in blue that we just drew, how many times does that cross your picture? Once, twice. So it fails the vertical line test. So two quick ways to see if something is a function is you look at your x values, do any of them repeat? Or, given a picture, if you draw a straight line through your picture, does it cross more than once? So we're going to make note of this right here. It must pass vertical line test. That's it. Sorry, my stylus is a little out of whack today, but what are you going to do? I call this VLT for short. It kind of reminds me of a BLT. It's a quick way to remember it. All right, let's look at some examples. So to determine whether relations are functions, um, for me, I look at the mapping diagram and I notice if it's repeating in the X or not. Uh, some of you may want to draw your ordered pairs out first. It, it's really your personal preference to what works best for you. So my ordered pair, negative 2, that arrow matches up to the 15. So that's our first ordered pair. Our next ordered pair is 0, 10, 0, 20. I'm just matching them up with the arrows there. 2 goes to the output of 5. And then 4 goes to 20. So is this relation a function? Well... Do my x's repeat? Unfortunately, yes. So we would say not a function because, because oftentimes they want you to explain why, our inputs or x values repeat. We're going to do the same thing for part b here. Now, instead of drawing my ordered pairs this time, let's look at our arrows. So does my input go to more than one output? Well, negative 3 just goes to 1. My negative 2 goes to the 7. My negative 1 goes to the 14. And my 0 goes to the 14. So none of these x's repeat. So yes, it's a function. all you're going to be expected to do there. Not too bad, right? Okay, our last example for this video before you get to go on to the next part of your packet. Describe the pattern in the mapping diagram and complete the diagram. So what's nice about functions and things like that, they have the same constant pattern or same rate of change. Think of it like your slope that you worked with last unit. So if we look at our inputs here, how are they changing each time? To get to 1 to 2, it's a plus 1, plus 1, plus 1. And this pattern keeps going on constantly, which is great. Let's see if we can find a pattern in the outputs. So how do we get from 4 to 8? Some of you are probably like, oh, Miss H, it's just plus 4. Yes, plus 4. We do the same thing here, plus 4. So, to get from 12 to the next piece, we're just going to add 4. 
meaning that our first missing piece is a 16. And we add 4 again, and that's a 20, and a 24. Not too bad. We are going to do the same thing with part B. So to get from negative 3 to 2, there is a difference in absolute value of 5. So if you added 5, you got to positive 2. 2 to 7 is a add 5. So we are going to literally do the same thing to find that first missing block. So 7 plus 5 is 12. We add 5 to that and we get 17. And we add another 5 to that to get the last one of 22. So you're just looking for the pattern and that is it. Now what you are going to complete next after these first few examples here Feel free to watch the video again if you're still confused on anything or ask me in class. But you are going to complete the Now You Try in your packet, which is 1 to 4. There will be a big stop sign after that, and it will tell you to take your GoFormative assessment on the iPad. But I do want to check your 1 to 4 first, so make sure I see that.